Hello, I'm Jonathan Friel from PTFS Europe, and what's on my mind today is ERM, Electronic Resource Management. Um, in fact, inspired by uh, Bywater's Monday Minutes last week, where Jesse and Kelly gave a little teaser into the new ERM module, I thought I'd focus a little bit today on the knowledge base. So just to reiterate what they said, this ERM project as part of CARO is a, a joint project that we're doing together with Bywater Solutions and with Bib Libre in France. Uh, and we've been working together uh, with Jonathan Durart, who many of you will know in the CARO community, and he's done a fantastic job putting together uh, what you're going to see now. So one of the key elements of any electronic resources management system is the knowledge base behind it. And we've been working with EBSCO to integrate their knowledge base into COA. And many of you may already be familiar or may already be users of EBSCO's knowledge base. And you probably have a login to EBSCO admin where you can uh, manage your knowledge base. Um, but EBSCO provide a tool called the Holdings IQ, which is a, a very detailed and well-documented API that allows you to manipulate that knowledge base from uh, other places. It's already uh, used in other products, such as uh, the open source Coral ERM. It's used in uh, Folio. Uh, so it's, it's, it's sort of proven and tested. And we've also used it inside of COA. So if we go over to our system preferences here and have a look at these new pre system preferences for uh, electronic resource management, you can see that we've got the module enabled. Uh, we've got the Holdings IQ API keys, which are provided to you by EBSCO. And then we have a list of providers that uh, we can integrate with. So we can use um, ERM and COA standalone, just with local holdings that we can create manually in the system, or we can integrate it with a third-party knowledge base, which is what we have here, EBSCO. Uh, and hopefully in the future, we'll be able to add other knowledge bases as well, like GoKB and KB Plus and so on. Uh, and just to show you how that works, if I go to my other tab here and go to Electronic Resources Management, you can see that we've got uh, EBSCO and local. And if I just deselect EBSCO for a moment there, refresh the screen, you can see that's gone. And let's just put it back again because we're going to have a look at it in a moment. And there it is. Uh, now, just to um, prove to you that uh, there's no trickery going on here, uh, I'm going to show you also um, our Coral system because this Coral system is also connected up to the same uh, EBSCO knowledge base. So we'll be able to actually compare and contrast what's happening real time here. So let's just go across to EBSCO eHoldings and let's just have a, a look for titles first of all. And I'm just going to search for a title. And the first thing to say is we have these, these filters on the right hand side here. So we can uh, just view titles that are selected as part of our holdings. So in EBSCO admin, uh, we can filter them down. And you can see that we also have these this visual representation here, this little checkbox, which identifies whether the title is, is selected or not. Now, you can see that the journal uh, tetrahedron here is selected. So that's a title that we have um, in our holdings. So let's just go and have a look in Coral. And I'm going to do the same search there. And you can see that indeed it is, it's selected there in the knowledge base. So at this point, uh, Coral agrees with Koha. And let's just go and have a look at the, the full view of this title. So here you can see that uh, we've got the metadata about the, the resource. We can see which packages it's included in. So you can actually see it's in 87 packages, this title, which is quite a lot. But we also have these filters here. So again, if we just want to identify the packages that we already uh, subscribe to, we can have use the filter of selected. And that actually narrows it down just to Science Direct. So let's click through to Science Direct. 
And again, we can see the coverage and you can see it's part of this package. But at the top of the screen here, we've got an add or remove the title from our holdings button. So I'm just going to remove this temporarily from, from my holdings. I'll just take a second to talk to EBSCO's knowledge base. And then let's go back to Coral just to provo uh, prove to you that I've got no cards up my sleeve. Um, we're going to just do another search there. And you can see now the status is unselected. So we can see that again, Coral agrees with Koha. And if we add that title back again, and we just do that one more time, uh, you can see that it's back there in Coral as well. So uh, that's that's perfect. The other thing just to say on titles, if I just go back to the title homepage, do a search on history, one of the nice things about when you're searching the EBSCO knowledge base, if you have actually created local titles under this section here, they're also searched uh, as part of this, this search. You get a combined search. If I just click through here, you can see that we drop through to uh, the local holdings. And hopefully you could just about see here that these are bold. Uh, so you can sort of see where you are in the, in the uh, tree here, if you like. Uh, and again, these are local holdings, so we can just click through and have a look at any of these, edit it. And just to say that the metadata is um, based on KBART2, so uh, the the uh, metadata fields will match both uh, your knowledge base and uh, any other ERM systems that you might be integrating with. Uh, let's go and have a look at packages this time, and we're going to search for journal archives. And again, just to say again uh, that we've got these filters here. We're also searching local holdings. So if I just narrow that down to uh, packages that I have previously selected, you can see that there's JISC journal archives. Uh, and again, let's just have a look into this. And it's going to pull back a list of all the titles that are in this package. So you can see there's quite a lot, 877 titles in this package. And again, we've got this visual representation here of which of the titles in this package we have a subscription to. Uh, and again, if we just use the filters here, we can filter down to, uh, let's just filter down to the ones that aren't selected, that haven't been selected as part of this package. Uh, so that's just a single title. And again, uh, from here, if we want to just perhaps, maybe that was an error. Well, perhaps I should have actually had that title. I can just add that title back to my holdings there. And then let's go back to the package. And now we've got uh, all of the uh, the whole package completely has been um, now added to our holdings. The other thing just to uh, point out on this screen is you can see that this package has been attached to an agreement. So I'm not going to talk about agreements today, but other than to say that you can attach uh, both local packages uh, to agreements and also EBSCO packages to agreements. So if I just click through to that agreement record, you can see that this has got two uh, packages attached to this agreement. Uh, so it's it's very exciting. We're very excited about where we are with Core ERM now, uh, hoping that you'll be able to look at something yourself at version 22.11. Uh, I have only just touched on knowledge base today because uh, I'm saving up some of the other bits and pieces that we've been doing in ERM for the Coacon 22 uh, presentation in in Kansas in September. Uh, so if you go onto the Coacon website and you can see that uh, I'll be there in person on uh, day three, uh, just talking a little bit more about uh, the ERM module and how it's progressing and showing you some of the other features 
Uh, so thank you for everyone who's provided feedback to date. It's been most helpful and uh, hopefully we'll look forward to either seeing some of you in person in, in Kansas uh, or virtually. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.